You are listening to the Gate 7 International Podcast, a podcast connecting Olympiacos fans from Melbourne to Baltimore, from London to Piraeus. We are four Olympiacos fans from every corner of the world, bringing you news and interviews of the team you love in English. With new episodes twice a week, you'll never lose the latest updates and stories of the team you love. This is our team, our city, and our land. Man, Oniro Trello. You're listening to the Gate 7 International Podcast. Welcome to the Gate 7 International Podcast, your official English source for all things Olympiacos FC and today Olympiacos BC. That's right, we are having our second official basketball special. Uh, we are joined by some experts from the well-known blog Red Point Guard. We have Manolo77, who was nice enough to join us for our first basketball edition some time ago. And we have another expert who you probably know as Penny Hardaway. Uh, if you see him on social media as well, you'll see that name. And uh, of course, I've got Lambro and Costa with me here as well. Adi is uh, usually sitting out the basketball ones, but uh, we're really excited to get into this. Uh, the EuroLeague season has come to a close for Olympiacos. It's that time of year when we have to sit and evaluate, look at who's going to be staying, who's going to be going. And uh, it's certainly going to be an interesting summer for Olympiacos Basketball Club. So... I guess I'll, I'll start by saying uh, Manoli and uh, and Penny, thank you both so much for, for joining the show. Hope everything is going well. Hope you had a wonderful Easter weekend. And uh, I mean, we've got a couple housekeeping things to get into as well very quickly before we do get started with some questions. So I'll just get that over with first. Uh, first of all, if you haven't seen it already, our written interview with Neri Castillo is available in both English and Greek on our website, gate7intl.com. Uh, so you can view that. There's some really nice words from Neri in there. He's he's uh, a true Greek at heart, and it's always great to see him speak so nicely about our club. Uh, additionally, as we've said, uh, we have an awards show coming up for the end of the season uh, where we're going to go over Olympiacos FC season, look at some of our top performers, some of our bottom performers as well, uh, and that will be happening live on May 23rd, which is a Sunday the day after the final of the Greek Cup. Um, we're going to have more details coming soon, but keep your eyes out on our socials, Gate7INTL, for the opening of the voting for those awards, uh, because we're going to give you a couple weeks to make your picks for all of our awards. Additionally, Olympiacos DC Academy have another game on Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. They'll be playing against Dream FC. You can access the link online from uh, the Olympiacos DC Academy website, and we will tweet it out as well. And last but not least, as always, thank you to our sponsor, Piraeus International. Piraeus International has been helping Greeks ship to and from the motherland during COVID-19. Shipments to Greece are going out from Baltimore, Maryland every month. Fill any large U-Haul box, 18 by 18 by 24, send it to our friends in Baltimore, and it will be shipped to the port of Piraeus for only $50. Better yet, fill any large wardrobe box and send it for $100. Give them a call at 410-675-4696 or send an email to sales at PiraeusINTL.com. Now, we do know, uh, as you're listening to this probably on Thursday or Friday, there was an Olympiacos football match on Wednesday, uh, a draw, 1-1 with Aris. Fortuny scores the goal. Solakis comes in and plays pretty well. Uh, Sulis and Karegoropoulos also played. We're going to get into this one probably this weekend, uh, but this is a basketball episode today. And also, like, who cares about 1-1 one, one draws without it? It's a, yeah. well, we'll talk about it later. A couple other pieces of football news. Um, Mari Camara is looking for a new agent. And the rumor has it that uh, this new agent will be other than Mino Raiola, which is, like, an absolutely huge name. It's just a testament to how talented of a player Mari is. Um, so what this probably means is Mari's looking for that big money move. And, uh, well... It, it might also mean that Mino Raiola is going to get Olympiacos some big money. We'll see what happens there. He's, of course, a representative of a bunch of huge players, and Madi is just another one of those. Uh, additionally, in case you didn't see around world football news, Jose Mourinho was recently sacked by Tottenham, didn't spend much time unemployed. He is now the new manager of Roma in a very controversial move. And uh, one of the first things he said is that they're looking for a new goalkeeper. 
And Jose Sa is, according to Gazzetta Deo Sport in Italy, he is one of the names that is being targeted. Uh, we know that Sa only has a limited amount of time at the club. We'll provide more updates on this as they come. But right now, it looks like we might be nearing the end with Sa, and we might need to replace him. So um, I guess we'll just get into basketball then. So the first thing I guess I'll ask uh, the two of you uh, is just in general, you know, if you could briefly summarize the season, how did it go? Um, what were your expectations at the beginning of the year? And then how did uh, the actual results compare to those expectations? Uh, so is it me to start? Is it okay? Since, yeah. since, since you're the you, you've been on the show before and Penny's the rookie this time, so we're gonna yeah. we'll go with you first, Manolo. Let's start with a veteran, as we said. Okay, <laughs> nice to be here again, guys, with you and have a nice uh, basketball talk. Uh, I'll start by saying uh, that uh, our last conversation was uh, just before uh, the game against Zalgiris, and uh, unfortunately. <laughs> The outcome of uh, this uh, game and uh, thereafter uh, didn't uh, uh, have the outcome uh, that we expected. Uh, unfortunately, the team um, had a poor form uh, uh, the last uh, one and a half months and uh, remaining uh, uh, out of its goal. I believe that... Uh, the goal uh, that was set uh, at the beginning of the season, which was uh, to qualify for the playoffs, was a realistic one. Um, it seemed uh, the team with uh, a good beginning uh, and some important wins um, could have uh, made it, I think. Uh, the main, uh, let's say, drawback was that uh, uh, the team could not have consistency. Uh, you remember that uh, after uh, uh, some important wins, uh, we had uh, some uh, very bad results. Uh, so, we did, you know, we couldn't have, uh, let's say, a chemistry and um, to build a momentum, as we say, which is very important in basketball, uh, and make some uh, wins in a row and uh, have... Uh, a, you know, a solid uh, position uh, in the playoff race. Uh, unfortunately, there were many reasons, uh, as we figured out uh, later about that. And um, uh, unfortunately, the team uh, didn't manage to qualify for the playoffs. Uh, I believe uh, that uh, the outcome uh, was uh, somehow negative. Uh, there were not uh, so many, uh, let's say, positive things uh, to have uh, from this season. And as you said previously, the team uh, now tries to build uh, a new roster uh, to achieve uh, these goals. It's interesting. Then, Sorry, Peter. It's interesting that Manola brought up the the last time we talked, which was right before that game in in Kaunas. And I think uh, I think that's the turning point in the season, really. Because if I remember well, that game went to extra time or to to overtime, and it was a uh, walk up. I think that 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 killed us. I think just uh, leveling the game. I may, but. I, I may be wrong on that, but I definitely remember Sluka slipping, whether it was at the end of regular time or whether it was at the end of, of overtime and then walk up really having a key role in that game. Um, and I think at the beginning of the season, like Manolo said, it was the expectation was get to the last eight and then see where we can go from there. Everyone was very excited with Costas Lucas coming back. And I think there was a, a heavy, a very heavy weight on his shoulders going into the season. We expected him to carry the team and have good support in the in the guard positions from Spanulis um, with a more, let's say, minimized role compared to other years, playing about 
15 minutes, maybe 20 in some games. But Aaron Harrison was brought in. We'll talk about him. Uh, I think he he built, he performed below what everybody was expecting of him. And um, we will, I mean, we will talk about the needs of the team uh, later on in the discussion and about Spanulis. Um, Penny, do you think that in the end, Olympiacos, their position in the in the fine in the final standings, is a fair reflection of our season? We can't hear Penny. Can you hear me right now? Yeah, yeah. we can hear you. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, our position really reflected our uh, um, the way that we played all year long. Um, we had some high expectations at the beginning of the year, as you said, uh, Costa, because of the... Um, because especially when it was announced that Slukas uh, would be returning to to our team, um, but uh, you know um, we lack consistency, as Manolo said, and uh, especially when COVID hit our team and we lost some key players for a couple of games, uh, there was this you know downward spiral after afterwards, and. Um, you know, ha having in mind that we were not consistent uh, because of the unsuccessful recruitment, I, I should say, uh, because you know, uh, it, it really it really depends on it, it, the whole year depends on how successful your recruitment is going to be uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, Aaron Harrison was um, supposedly was our starting shooting guard. Um, you know, his um, qualifications were not uh, evaluated, like, like correctly evaluated. Uh, he was more of a shooting wing, especially a rookie in the EuroLeague. He was more of a shooting wing and uh, we, wanted, we wanted him to be a ball handler. Uh, we were trying to set some picks for him to operate and he didn't have the experience you know the explosiveness and the and the um, um, you know all the qualifications to to support this role and uh, you know after some point um, everything went wrong you know it was one of these years when at some point uh, you just miss everything and everything goes wrong you know and uh, quite frankly nothing went right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in general, and uh, it was kind of a disastrous year, but you know, it happens in basketball, it happens, and it was a really bad year for Coach Barzokas as well. Yeah, I think that's fair. The ball handlers were really missing on the team because it seemed like Sukas was getting so many minutes because the coach didn't trust Banulis at the end of the games because of his defensive ability, yeah. and then there was really, really no one else, and then Harrison had injury problems, but. I, I think the season really changed right when we spoke for the first time after that huge game against Maccabi Tel Aviv. That was such a good game. It was a back and forth and just like your heart was going to explode. But the team came back and lost, was it to Asvel, the French team, uh, at home. I And then I think just like the result went downhill from there. The Zalgiris game, which went terrible. It just It seemed like after then, everything just went downhill. So I guess... I, I, I kind of want to ask, like, were what were the mistakes made in the summer? Should certain of players have stayed? Brandon Paul, one name that comes to mind, should he have stayed instead of someone like Aaron Harrison? Charles Jenkins, should he have come in? What what do you guys think about that? I guess, Penny, if you want to start. Um, you know, um, yeah, um, Aaron Harrison, um, you know, as I said before, he was more of a shooting wing coming into uh, Euroleague. Uh, so, yeah, we needed some experienced ball handlers. Um, we lacked quality in general because, you know, when you sign, when we signed Lucas for 
you know, almost like 1.8, 1 1.9 uh, million a year. Um, the budget was limited. After that, we had like close to four and a half million for uh, uh, for the rest of the for the rest of the roster. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's as simple as that. When you lack quality, uh, it's gonna show sooner sooner or later. It's gonna show, and uh, you can you can somehow fight that by building a strong defensive team. This is what most of the coaches do when they lack the offensive weapons, like really expensive players, like combo guards that could be really decisive in this, um, you know, making the big shots and everything. Uh, but, um, we lacked a couple of we lacked a lot of things uh first of all there was no we had no one to put pressure on the ball defensively uh especially in the in those these guards positions uh i mean lucas is not a good defender spanulis is not a good defender harrison was mediocre uh jenkins was a good defender but he was like fourth fifth guy on the rotation um on the guard positions yeah costa do you want to say something yeah just you're, you're you're touching on an interesting topic there because um i wanted to pick on something you said earlier as well about barzokas you said barzokas didn't have a good season and i i wanted to ask you to elaborate on that and yeah. what, what what your thoughts were but before um i Maybe you, you want to say, say something about Laredzakis as well, because Laredzakis is a player that came in towards the end of the season. He, yep. you know, he brought passion. He brought that pressure in, in defense. He he made some big shots. Um, but also, do you, I mean, you talked about us having a low budget after we signed Slukas and yep. we had a player like Adonis Konyaris on the bench before he got injured we know he's good at pressing the ball we know he's he's a good defender did we really need to sign charles jenkins so yeah a couple of things there for you ah uh, you know conyaris had his um, had his moments last year i mean he was given the opportunity to show what he can do or not and uh, he was quite you know don't want to say disappointing but you know he was Again, we're talking about the fourth or fifth guy on the rotation, and uh, we really needed to have someone playing like huge minutes that could put pressure on the ball. You know, uh, FS has uh, Misic, uh, Barcelona has Kalathis, and uh, Zalgiris has Thomas Walkup. Uh, we used to have Dante Weber. Yeah, Basconia has Pieria Henry, which is. Uh, who is a great defender you really need to put some pressure on the ball um you know consistently not waiting from your fourth or fifth guy on their guard rotation uh to put pressure on the ball you really yes peter oh yeah i was just gonna say like on jenkins i like what you said about needing a real point guard i, I think he's just a, a small shooting guard really yeah um you know he's just he's a very score first he's not going to make the plays like Slukas can. And so I totally agree with what you said of Slukas yeah. is a fantastic player. And so there was so much excitement when he got brought in, but he had to play so much and there was so much pressure on him. It kind of, you know, made his impact a lot, uh, a lot weaker because he had so much pressure on him all the time, I would say. Yeah, exactly. And you can, you can remember that when Slukas uh, went uh, to the bench, uh, there was no one that could, like control the game on such a high level. I mean, Spanulis is a great player, used to be one of the greatest winners that we ever uh, um, saw in the EuroLeague level, but he's almost 39 years old. I mean, teams can put big players, players that can put pressure on the ball and really deactivate um, your uh, offensive plan and cut, cut you in half, you know? And um, yeah, we didn't have the ball handlers. We didn't have the aggressive ball handlers, which is extremely, in my opinion, is extremely vital uh, when, when, you know, recruiting players. You need to bring aggressive guards. 
you need to bring players that can, that could can you know pass that can leave their defender behind and like attack or drive and kick or do s s such things you know and um, we lack you know aggressive guards we lack pressure on the ball our defensive approach was this uh, sweet soul um, approach you know was sometimes was like I mean, Coach Barjokas, you know, mind was like, you know, he was, sometimes he was not thinking clear. And, uh, you know, it really has to do with your recruitment during the summertime. And uh, if that goes wrong, then it could get ugly, you know, at some point, sooner or later. And we lacked size, which is another vital element in, in, in basketball. I mean, we lacked size. Our, our starting center was uh, two meters, like Hassan Martin is two meters tall to 2.01. Uh, I mean, there were quite a few things missing. And, uh, and especially when Papa Nicolau was injured, because he was a glue guy. I mean, he's a, he's a strong guy, a tall guy. A, a guy that who, who can support the switching defense, and uh, when we lost him, uh, we didn't do anything to replace him. We didn't do anything to bring in new players when we saw that we were lacking several things, you know, on the roster, which is what most uh, I think most of the teams did that. I mean, even Bayern. Look at Bayern; they were playing the the playoff game yesterday, they had this series against uh, Milano. And uh, they brought DJ Silly because they saw that they needed an extra scoring guard. Uh, they brought uh, James Geist because they, they saw that they were lacking some size and, you know, athleticism uh, on their uh, front line. We didn't do anything. We didn't bring anyone. Uh, Hassan Martin got injured as well. And then we brought Costa Kufos. I mean, when we're lacking quality, when we don't do a good recruitment, when we, you don't do anything to improve your rotation and your team, well, sooner or later, you're going to have some major issues. I think this is possibly an interesting time to start looking at some of the players on our roster and start thinking about next season. And uh, we do have a, a segment, Stay or Go, and we have a few players that, that we want to talk to you about. Um, before that, I completely agree with you. I think that when we lost Costas Papa Nicolau midway through the season, he was really, he'd really found his form again. He looked like the player he was when he was in his early 20s. Very aggressive on defense, like you said. Um, you know, he was the glue. He was the glue in the team when Slukas wasn't on the, on the court. He was doing everything offensively, defensively, fantastic. And then losing him was, it just went downhill. And I think that's when we had that def that run of defeats, that record run. I think it was nine or 11 defeats that we had in a row. I don't even remember how many it was. It was embarrassing. Um, but but anyway, maybe we can maybe we can go into our stay or go segment already and the first player we're gonna pick is this guy Livio Jean Charles what do you guys think Manolo maybe we will go to you do you think he should be on the roster next year I'll answer you right uh, now but uh uh, if I can uh, add some uh, yes. something about uh, what Penny said, he covered me with uh, what he said, and I agree with him. Uh, I just wanted uh, to add that um, uh, last year's uh, roster didn't have uh, uh, players with two-way profile, as we call. That could be, you know, effective both uh, in offense and. Uh, at the same time, a defense, uh, as Penny said. So um, we had to, to make some uh, tricks in the rotation. And uh, unfortunately, 
as you said, the acquisition of Jenkins, who is a one-dimensional player, uh, he's a, a clear off-ball guard. He can't uh, create shots uh, for himself or his teammates. Um, unfortunately, it changed also the role of Harrison, as Penn said. So uh, I don't want to justify his poor performance, but I think uh, he was not uh, only himself to blame uh, for... Uh, the situation. Uh, now let's go on to the topic you said. Before uh, before you jump into that, can I ask both of you, who's the last combo guard you remember playing for the club that actually fulfilled that combo position? Because I'm trying to think of it now, and I might think Mazaris, maybe, but he only had the spot up three. And you know, good good IQ, but I'm trying to think who the last like, big combo guard we had was. I don't think that after AC Law, we really did have a, a, a combo guard that could fulfill uh, all of his duties. Uh, Hackett could have uh, this ah, role, yeah. but I don't think that uh, Mr. Sferopoulos. Uh, had the right role for him. I think he was uh, a little bit, um, you know, like a backup uh, guard. And uh, although he could have uh, more uh, offensive duties, he was somehow, you know, held back by the coach. I would love to see him come back. By the way. I mean, retrospect is a beautiful thing because I can sit here and say it was a big mistake that we let him go. When we let him go, he had that massive injury on his knee and nobody knew he was going to come back to play at the level he's playing now. So it's easy for us to sit here and say it was a big mistake. Um, but even at his age, yeah, I, I, I would love to see that guy come back. Anyway, sorry, we can... Uh, Penny. Oh, yeah, can he go first and then I have something as well? Yeah, yeah. Penny, go first. Did you have anything on the combo guard? No, lab will go, go to you. Okay. Can you hear I, me I just, now? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you now. Do you want to go? Okay, okay. Uh, that's a good question, Costa, about the combo guards. We've discussed this a lot of times. And uh, I think that the rationale be behind the recruitment each year was that Spanulis was the huge combo guard. And then we were trying to find guys that could support him, you know, uh, and could really play with him. So we were not um, we were not trying to find a combo guard that would run the offense or run the system. Uh, Spanulis was like the combo guard, and then we were trying to find players like Eric Green, if you remember Eric Green. Um, he was not a combo guard, but he was like someone who could score the ball. So shot it, creator. Yeah, so creator. He was he could make his own shot. He was elite in doing that. Actually, uh, you remember the semi final against Cheska yeah. and the huge, huge, huge shot uh, that he made. And Spanulis let him. He, he he was like he showed him like take this shot. It's all about you right now. And he made that shot, like a huge shot. And um, so, yes, Strelnix, maybe Strelnix was, a, he was not like the definition of a combo guard, but he could do, uh, you know, he could create for, the, for his teammates and he could create his own shot as well. But, yeah, we're lacking combo guards. Yeah, we're lacking combo guards. We should think about, recruiting more of these guys, you know, in the future. And I I kind of want to throw this out there because it's something I've been thinking about about this team in about the past few years. But some players have come and not performed, but they've left and they've created a career somewhere. And I'm thinking of Wade Baldwin this year with Bayern Munich. And I'm thinking Zach Lede as well has had a decent little turnaround of his career. Like, I think also... Well, is it Punter? Kevin Punter is yeah, also having Kevin a good... Punter as well, yeah. Yeah, a lot of these guys have come and people in Greece have said, oh, they're, they suck, they're nothing. Then they go somewhere else abroad and they look really good. 
Wade Baldwin, I always thought from an American perspective, was a decent player when he played for the Trailblazers. I know Peter probably may agree with that even more. He was a first-round pick in that. Yeah, NBA he was draft. a first-round pick, and it, 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 I was not surprised to see him have a good year going somewhere else. Like, do we not give some of these people enough time? Can Aaron Harrison be another person who leaves next year and becomes a great player? Like, I don't know what what you guys think about that as well. You know, it's all about the context and it's all about the support that you're showing to these players because, uh, you know, Olympiacos, especially during the uh, last de decade, he wa uh, Olympiacos was one of the most successful teams. Uh, so you, we were expecting that anyone that was recruited um, would, you know, perform right away and, like, be a great player and you know, give us everything and et cetera, et cetera. And we didn't uh, support these players. I remember that uh, um, you mentioned Kevin Panther. Uh, it was the third game, I believe, last year uh, when we recruited him. And it was after the third game of the season. Like, it's the third game. It's the third game. And he took a lot of shots and he missed those a, a lot of shots. And uh, the media, the next day, the media were like, he's not, he's not built for Olympiacos. He's not a good player. I mean, he missed 10, 12, 13 shots. It's the third game. I mean, it's the third game. If you don't support, if, and you know, it, it really affects anyone. And re it really affects the fans. It really affects anyone around the team. Um, and uh, yeah. You, you, you also mentioned uh, Wade Baldwin, okay. Baldwin, this year, he was the main ball handler of uh, Bayern, right? He had the, the biggest usage uh, uh, ratio. So he was the main ball handler. That means that his coach trusted him with running the offense. And he was the, the main fo uh, focus on, on the offensive end. Uh, when when Bold, uh, Wade Baldwin played for us, uh, you know, he had a completely different role. Um, at the moment that he was turning the ball over or like missing a shot, we were the coach was ready to you know bring him to the bench and you know use another player or anyone. We don't we don't support our players and. Uh, we're not we, we, don't, we don't give them the, the right context and the right opportunities to show their talent this is what i think manolo you have any thoughts on that as well yeah thank you uh, i agree with penny i think that uh, during the last few years uh, the environment uh, of olbiagos bc maybe is not like uh, in the previous years when uh, we developed uh, uh, many, especially foreign players. And uh, to add to what he said, uh, I, when you sign, for example, Kevin Panther, you knew who he is. He wants uh, to take shots, uh, to be, you know, to get hot uh, and find rhythm. You can't uh, make uh, Panther uh, another guy than he is. You can't uh, have him as a role player. You know that when you sign Panther, he will take shots. So you can't judge him, as Penny said, after, uh, so after uh, two or three games. He also had uh, good performances uh, last year. Uh, the decision was uh, different. Uh, and uh, we saw that uh, immediately when he went to uh, Red Star, uh, he, he was uh, a different player. He managed to be the leader of the team. Uh, maybe the same with Baldwin, uh, although he doesn't have the mental uh, attributes, let's say, uh, especially at crunch time, but uh, he's a very talented and uh, gifted athlete. Uh, he could have a second chance uh, in the team, I think. We also tried uh, to make him something else uh, for him. As Penny said, uh, Baldwin wants the ball in his hands to make the decisions. Of course, as a rookie in Europe, he will have uh, his good times, he will have his bad times. But if you don't uh, try him uh, in uh, the longer term, 
you will not uh, have his potential realized. So maybe patience is one uh, of the element that is missing, let's say, the last years. And maybe this is uh, also driven by the fact that uh, the team uh, is uh, far from uh, success and from trophies. So everyone is impatient about uh, uh, new players, but basketball is a sport that needs, you know, a solid uh, roster. Some players to be one or two years together to build chemistry in order to make a good team. I'm going to say something a little bit controversial. And that's that I think having a player like Spanulis on the team is both a blessing and a curse because it has meant that all the guards we've tried to pick, particularly in the last two to three years, when Spanulis has been getting on age-wise, I have no doubt he could probably play another year, but we can get into that. But it meant that every time we were recruiting for a player, like Penny said, we were looking for players that could play the guard position to support him, to complement his characteristics, not to complement the characteristics of the team. Yeah, look at Jenkins, for example. This is a correct, this is a typical example. But that's what we saw a lot during the season, is because we we didn't really have a. You know, Barjokas tried playing Spanulis and 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 Slukas together. Uh, there were a lot of um, setups where we saw Spanulis and Jenkins playing together, so that Jenkins could support Spanulis's weaknesses on defense. Um, but there was just no no real chemistry, and we've 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 said it already. When Slukas came off. Spanulis could give some, you know, some quality minutes in some games. And in, in some games, you saw him wind the clock back and hit those big threes and driving into the lanes, etc. But, but OK, now is the time to, you know, Sp Spanulis. We, we'll talk about Spanulis later because we can have a whole whole segment on on him, which which we let's get into that after. But maybe going back to this stay and go sorry labra go ahead i just have one point like the development point i think uh shouldn't get lost because olympiakos had a first round draft pick but how how much did that first round draft pick ever play for olympiakos and i'm talking about alexi is it pukos shevsky i always mess his name up he he's playing now in the nba for the oklahoma city thunder but he wasn't good enough to play for olympiakos like is that a bit weird can we say that you know like i think i think we talked about that on the last pod and i, yeah. we, we, I should we, say i think that's not atypical for european players like uh porzingis was as as far as i understand a bench player at sevilla and i don't even know if sevilla are in the euro league and uh he was immediately a star player when he got to the nba i think it's i think a that summer between when you get picked and when you begin playing in the league is is uh the players change and develop quite a bit uh coming over to the states and i also think uh the nba is a bit different um and and it is in some ways easier for young players to to get in and play and score it's a bit more based on skill i would say and so these skilled young players uh do a little bit better that's one thing i would say uh as far as why that happens i think it's uh, of course you know Doncic is uh an exception he was MVP of the EuroLeague and comes over to the NBA. And of course he's going to play, but um, that's one thing I would say for that. But I mean, we can get back to stay or go. I think, uh, I think Jean Charles was the first one that we had Costa. Do, do, do you guys have any, any thoughts on Pokushevsky? Like Manolo, I know we, we asked you this question, I think on the last pod and we said, I mean, why, why couldn't we, why couldn't we play him? Yes. We had discussed about it. Uh, apart from all these uh, things that Peter said, and I agree with him, it's that the pressure, especially in Greek teams, it's uh, too high for the result. And uh, since there is no patience, let's say for players like Panther and Baldwin, how could we have patience for a young guy like him, uh, uh, however uh, talented uh, he is? Uh, um, he didn't get his chances. He had uh, only spell uh, 
at uh, the second division. And uh, now he's at the NBA. We will never know what would have happened uh, if we gave him a chance. Maybe it's better for his career. Uh, so I don't think that uh, it's something uh, for further discussion. As Peter said, uh, most uh, European players that uh, succeeded did not have uh, a success uh, in Euro teams. And uh, remember about Novitski, uh, so many examples that uh, left from Europe uh, at early, at the early Giannis stages well, of, uh, of course. their career. Yes, and of course, at the Kubo. And uh, they succeeded uh, immediately at the NBA. But as yeah. you say, from now on, uh, Olbiakos should have a more... Uh, clear development plan for players, especially because the, the level of, uh, of Greek youth uh, players is not so high like previously. So something must be done with this. Okay, well, we'll never know, but um, is in a team like Oklahoma that aren't very good, but let's be honest, but that gives but, him an opportunity to, to play. Just like when Yanis went to the Bucks, the Bucks were shit. And Yanis got minutes to play, Yanis yeah. developed, and now Bucks is one of the best teams in the East. Um, but going back to this stale go, um, if we look at our bigs, we touched upon this already. I think going into next season, for me, we keep Martin. He, for me, is the only big that we keep next year. Um, Ellis, for me, I'm, you know, he's a low-budget player. He's um, uh, he's not good enough. He's not good enough for me. Uh, but Jean-Charles, do we keep him as a player that can play at the four and the five and invest in a number one, like, big that can really give us something under the racket, be a rim protector, uh, play with his back to the basket on the offense. What is it, How does that look to you? Having, I think, Martin as a second option, we need to buy a center, like a five, and jean Charles is somebody that can play at the four and the five. What are your guys' thoughts about, about the front line next year? Maybe I start, I start with. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, Martin, uh, with his performances uh, at the first half of the season, uh, proved that um, despite uh, his uh, lack of size, uh, he's a player that could have uh, a role uh, in the new team. But I believe as a backup, uh, maybe we could. Uh, uh, be more efficient uh, having a, a starter center with other characteristics. Uh, names like Landale uh, that are transfer targets uh, show us the way the team should move. Uh, like mobile seven footers uh, with a versatile um, skill set offensively, Landale can do many things uh, in the offensive end. He can uh, shoot the ball uh, from three-point line. Uh, he can play pick and roll. Uh, he's quick enough uh, to run in the open floor. And uh, also, although he's not uh, an elite defender or not, uh, he doesn't have a strong physical profile, um, he's a decent uh, defender, I think, of a defensive end. He's long uh, uh, and uh, he has a size. He's, he's a seven-footer. And uh, he has also Euroleague experience. I think uh, a big guy like him could have uh, the center uh, spot for the next year. And uh, he could, uh, you know, he could uh, be, let's say, supplementary to Martin. These two are having a different characteristics. So it's a, a good, uh, you know, they have uh, one, they feel the, the other player, let's say. So now, as far as oh, go ahead. Mike. Yes. Well, I was just gonna say, uh, first of all, Lendell is. I think a, he would be a good player for the team uh, for all the reasons that you said. But also about Ellis, I actually um, 
I I've not watched the team nearly as much as uh, the four of you. But if we if we go to the analytics, if we go to the stats, uh, Octavius Ellis has actually had quite a nice season. Yeah. Um, and I'll just list some stats off. And he does have some flaws that are evident. But um, I will say if we take if we take the stats per thirty six minutes. Uh, which basically adjusts for the fact that Martin is going to play more than Ellis. Ellis averages more points, rebounds, and blocks per gate per, per 36 minutes than Martin. So in the same amount of time, he's doing more in all of those stats. Additionally, uh, Ellis is shooting a bit better from the field uh, at 72.6%, although Martin is just behind him at 72.0%. And he also shoots 79% from the line, which is really good. Uh, although Martin at 71% is also pretty good. Now the thing, the problem with Ellis is he turns the ball over a lot, especially for a big guy who's not handling the ball a whole lot. He's averaging 3.3 turnovers per 36 minutes. That's more than guys like Printezis and McKissick per minute. And those are guys that are, you know, handling the ball out on the perimeter a little bit more. So I think that's a big problem. But um, I think, you know, maybe that's interesting to think about with Ellis. His, uh, his advanced analytics as well, his offensive rating and his defensive rating are also very good. Uh, although he's just a little bit worse than Martin in those categories. Yes, but Ellis that's... indeed uh, had very good numbers. Uh, but the fact is that uh, he's a player that... Um, uh, He's error prone, although he doesn't play with the ball in his hand. He receives the ball. So, as you say, this number is uh, very big. And, yeah, no, uh, it is. Also, he's not elite in any of areas of his game. He's not a good finisher close to the basket. You remember he's missing uh, uh, easy shots. Uh, he's not an elite rebounder. Although last year he showed uh, uh, good signs in this area. So, Olbiakos ended up uh, in having two backup senders and no one who could be a real starter for the team. And uh, for many reasons, I think that Martin will keep his place uh, instead of Ellis. Uh, there are uh, similar, uh, there are players with similar characteristics uh, with Ellis you can find uh, in the free market. So I think, as you said, uh, Martin will remain and we will have uh, another center with size, uh, definitely. And... Uh, We'll see about the twinner position, as you say, with Zansal, what will be the, the decision. And I guess as well, uh, this sort of relates to another big guy that played for Olympiacos this year, Costa Kufos. Uh, we didn't see very much of him, and it, it wasn't great. I think maybe he's a bit past it. Maybe he's a bit too old. Um, even if you compare what he did this year to Cheska, he's, uh, I would say, quite a bit worse. Um, Manoli or Penny, any thoughts on, on Kufos? Is it worth keeping him around for another year? Do you think he will stay or do you think he's just too old? Let's pass the ball to Penny, I think. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it really comes down to our budget next year because he's not a, um, he's quite an expensive player. And uh, unless you have the budget of, you know, Fenerbahce or Seska to have a, a guy like Kufos, like filling your, your front line positions, um, you, he's not a cheap player. Unless he's willing to take like a huge cut on his contract because he used to play for Seska last year and he came straight from the NBA. So he's not a th like a 300,000 Euros, Euro player. I mean, he's gonna ask for quite a lot of money, and uh, you know, he's gonna be like the third option at the center position, right? We're not talking about him being like a backup center because Martin has a contract and he's gonna stay, and he's a Misko Raznatovic. Uh, Mis you know who Misko Raznatovic is. He's like one of the most popular agents in Europe. He's like the Minor Ayola. He's quite like the Minor Ayola of uh, basketball in Europe. And uh, we wanna, you know, have good, a good relationship with him as well because he's 
providing us with a lot of players. And like everyone in Europe uh, wants to have a good relationship with him. And um, I don't think I don't think that Kufos is gonna stay unless the owners decide to like increase the budget a lot. You know, our budget this year was close to seven million for uh, players. Uh, you know, if it goes up to eight and a half, nine, then we could consider Kufos as an the, the third option um at the center position but you know i personally i don't i don't really like him he's a he's a bit you know slow uh he's not very you know agile and uh, when it comes to euroleague basketball you really need to be you really need to have those qualifications like you know you understand what i'm talking about be more athletic. Yeah, of course, mobile. man. You really, you really yeah. need to have the footwork and everything. You really need to bring in tons of energy. You saw Kyle Hines yesterday, for example, <laughs> and he's and he's 33, 34, but he brings tons of energy, man. He's and he's a great fighter. Kufos is like, he's a bit, you know, like chill out. You know, he's a good guy. He's a he, he he's a He's not a bad player. I mean, he has some good uh, qualifications, but you know, in general, no. I would try to find something else. And about Zansarl, uh, I'm not in love with Zansarl. I like the player because he's, vers he's versatile. He could be a good uh, option as a twinner, as we say, uh, playing both positions, uh, the power forward and the center position, but He's not shooting the ball well. I mean, I, I really, we really, really, really need to find players that can shoot the ball well. That was a huge problem this year. This year, like good shot makers, like shot makers, even from the power forward position. I don't know. I'm not. There are, you know, the the, the team needs to find those these, these players. But I have a some sort of problem with his shot making he's not a good I, I think he was shooting 28 percent 29 percent from the three point uh, range so this is not this is not good enough but he's an athletic player he's a smart player he's a good help defender when playing at the power forward position and he showed that he could play the center at the center position and uh, you know, play. He, he he was he he gave us some solid games. So uh, unless we find, I wouldn't want to risk as well. But it really comes down in general. It, it comes down to the rest of the players that are gonna play the power forward, the center position. I mean, you really need to find the qualifications that you're lacking. And to what extent uh, Jean Sarl, you know, can bring some, cover some of these uh, aspects in our game. So if you bring a proper seven footer, like a good solid center, um, yeah, he could stay at the team. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't want to risk too much. And at the end of the, um, you know, you don't want to change everyone on the roster because, you know, if we, quite frankly, if we are, we, if we are really, you know, cynical uh, with our approach, we should, like, send a lot of players away. But, you know, um, I like the player and uh, we really need to be smart in recruiting the right people and he's not going to be the problem. Like... If that makes sense. So is it, basically, he's going to be a third option four and a third option five. So you want to bring in somebody agile, somebody mobile, a seven yeah. footer, a yeah. big at the five, and then you've yeah. got Vezenkov starting next year at the four. But yeah. it is coming off the bench, and then Jean Charles can play at the five and at the four yeah. as and, needed. 
Yeah, and Zansar brings size, so when he's playing the power forward position, uh, he's a good, uh, he's, uh, he could play with uh, Hassan Martin, who is not very tall, uh, at the five position. You know, and especially at the switching defense, when you bring, when you bring uh, Hassan Martin on top of the key, uh, you, need, you really need to have someone who is big and has size to go for the rebound. Yeah. Uh, actually, everyone needs to go for the rebound. We need to um, invest on like tall guys, big guys, and muscular guys. All these things, you know, they really they are really important when you're recruiting players. And uh, for Octavius Ellis, I mean, he's a he's a good player. Okay, I I don't like him a lot. And uh, he was skinny. He the people was were pushing him. He couldn't look uh, smaller players when they when the the opponent was switching. He couldn't look smaller players. He couldn't look his position and then you know finish above the rim. Uh, Ceska Ceska Moscow was switching with uh, Mike James on him, and he couldn't like push Mike James. And Mike James is like 20 centimeters shorter and like 20 kilos. Uh, and he's like 80, 85 kilos. And he couldn't push him. And he's not a fighter. I, I, I didn't like this aspect of his game. So, I, yeah. I think a player like Jean Charles is important uh, for the reason you said, because like switching is so important and you have so many different matchups. But I also think there might be some games, depending on who you play, where he doesn't get in very much. Um, depending on the opponent. And yeah. so I, if, if he stays, you know, it would have to be sort of under the agreement that he might not play a lot every day. Um, I, think he, I think he's okay with that kind of role, you know. Yeah. He's a team player. He's a team player, and he's, he a, great, yeah. he's a great player on switching defense. He could yeah. really support the role. Yeah, and I think, did he spend a year or two in the NBA? Or at least, he, I remember him trying to go over he uh, was with the Spurs. But- yeah, uh, I think he played uh, on the summer league. Manolo, uh, if I'm yeah, not that's mistaken, right. he, he had played uh, for San Antonio and yeah, for its development that. team in the G League. Yeah, but he had yeah, some injuries, right. so his spell was not so long. Well, I say that because I mean that's uh, that's good support for the fact that he's willing to be a team player. The Spurs, uh, they'll only look for those types of players. But anyway, um, our, our next player, I, I should say. Uh, for stay or go, um, Shaq McKissick. He just signed a new contract, man. Yeah, he's got to stay. He's staying. Yeah, he's staying, yeah. I th- can I bring up a real quick point about the shooting, and this goes back to recruitment. Like sometimes when we would play teams, we would just get shot out of the building, and it would be over some nights. I don't know if you guys. It, it just like we couldn't keep up with some of these better shooting teams, like. I think of Zalgetti so many times they just outshoot us and we, we, we lose to them. They just have great shooters sometimes and it's so annoying to watch. Um, and this goes to recruitment maybe if we wanted to go there so early. Dorsey, Lloyd from Red Star Belgrade, are these players who have can spread the floor, can, can bring something to us? Like, Are we hearing names of players who can stretch the floor a bit? Manolo, what do you think of those players and that aspect of our game? Yes, uh, as you say, uh, a a great aspect of the modern basketball is shooting and especially shooting uh, from all positions. Uh, As we said before, Landale, for example, uh, has this uh, element in his game and it's very important because, uh, for example, Landale um, uh, or another uh, big guy who can shoot uh, the three, uh, makes room for uh, players like Makisic uh, to have uh, space uh, inside the paint and uh, have their game. Uh, now, for the players that you say, uh, Lloyd and Dorsey, uh, these are names that um, are uh, very hot uh, names in the market and uh, they are connected uh, from uh, various uh, sources uh, with Olympiacos. I think that both of them... Um, except uh, from their EuroLeague experience, are players uh, uh, with uh, a clear uh, uh, profile. They are uh, scoring guards of another type, uh, but uh, both of them have uh, a good uh, shot. 
Uh, especially Lloyd uh, can also play one versus one uh, with success. And uh, compared to Harrison, uh, I think uh, they could uh, be more, uh, let's say, uh, for the, the right persons, for the right role. Um, I would like to say we had a very interesting conversation uh, with Milan Tomic at Red Point Guard. And he said something uh, which find me which found me 100% in agreement. Uh, Olbiakos, uh, this in this year's recruitment, tried you know to have uh, twinners in every position. Like you know, Harrison was a shooting guard at a little bit of small forward. Zenkin was uh, a shooting guard and could play for some minutes in uh, the point guard. Uh, these two players are let's say pure shooting guards. We know that they will have a specific role and uh, they will be, you know, they will be a, a man on a mission, let's say. The player to put uh, the ball in the basket. They are, have uh, a great scoring instincts. I think that they are players that could fit better uh, uh, in this role. In comparison, let's say, to Harrison, who is a scoring guard, but we didn't use him uh, uh, in order to have uh, his advantages uh, in the surface, let's say. We tried to to make him another player. Lloyd and Dorsey are crystal clear what uh, they can do at the court. And I think that uh, this is uh, towards the right direction, combo guards like them. Yeah. And, and Dorsey, I think, has a Greek passport as well, so that would that would help for for things. Penny, what what do you think of those two names, and are you optimistic about them? Uh, you mean Dorsey and uh, Lloyd? Lloyd, yeah. Um, you know, you we really need to think about uh, Coach Barjoka's uh, philosophy and uh, what he does and what he does not uh, do when you know, in terms of um, uh, his approach on offense and defense. Uh, he, Coach Barjokas uh, really likes players that uh, could uh, be effective on isolation situations uh, and uh, players that can run the pick and roll, that can operate from uh, on the pick and roll, and uh, players with size and athleticism that could uh, uh, support his approach on defense, the switching defense, and the it's like almost pack the paint or jump to the ball defense. You know, we protect our paint, uh, we jump to the ball. Uh, you really need to have athletic players and uh, players with great size and defensive uh, skills to support his, uh, his approach. Uh, we, always need to, uh, we always need to find players that support a coach's uh, philosophy because Every professional player is a good player. I mean, there, there's no doubt about that. Aaron Harrison is a good player. Um, Charles Jenkins is a good player. Uh, I don't know, Jean Charles, um, um, Hassan Martin is a good player. But do they fit um, Coach Barjoka's approach? Could they fit his system? I mean, yeah. we have, you, know, you, you understand what I mean? Because yeah. we have so yeah, many. For sure. Yeah, we've, we've watched so many games from Coach Barjokas and we know what he likes. Uh, so uh, Tyler Dorsey is a good player. Yeah, he could uh, fit, his, uh, he could fit uh, Coach Barjokas' system. Uh, he could be a great, uh, he's a great spot-up shooter. Uh, so when Costas Lucas is uh, setting the pick and rolls, when the ball is moving, uh, having the option to... Um, having the option of Tyler Dorsey to shoot the ball or get the ball and create uh, his own shot off the dribble, uh, yeah, he can do that. Aaron Harrison couldn't do that. Aaron Harrison couldn't uh, be effective uh, shooting off the dribble, you know. Uh, we have Tyler Dorsey has showed uh, his uh, next year is going to be his, his third year in the EuroLeague, so we know what he can do. Uh, Harrison or Baldwin, uh, they were a bit, uh, you know, some sort of enigma. Uh, we needed to see how they could operate, what they could do or what they couldn't do. 
uh, but we need to bring experienced players. Uh, no more, you know, uh, how you say, it, uh, no more uh, lottery picks or whatever, you know. Uh, and um, Lloyd is a more, I, I like, I think that I like um, Jordan, uh, Jordan Lloyd is his, uh, his name. Anyway, yeah. I think that he like, uh, I like Jordan Lloyd a bit more because he's more aggressive. I really like aggressive guards. Uh, he can drive to the basket uh, harder, you know, than uh, Dorsey. Um, and uh, he's a solid ISO player. Um, I like both 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 options. I like both of them. Nice. And we, yeah, if I can cut you off, just like one point you made, like saying like all professional players are pretty decent. I think that's that's really true. Except there's one exception. Will Cherry had to be one of the worst basketball <laughs> players I've ever seen play for Olympia. <laughs> like how yeah, this guy's true. professional basketball player. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. I mean, like the majority. Yeah, I'm just joking I'm with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, do, do you guys think i mean realistically are we going for both of those players tyler dorsey and jordan lloyd i completely agree like tyler dorsey is a really good spot up shooter um i remember him in march madness before moving before moving to the nba before getting drafted i mean he can hit the three he can shoot off the dribble but he's a bit uh, yeah, he doesn't have that aggressiveness. So, I mean, are we are we going for both players? Do you think we're going to be picking up two guards in the off season? Maybe, uh, like Penny. What do you think? Uh we're we're definitely going for two guards. I don't think that we're gonna go for both Lloyd and Dorsey because they kind of have the same qualifications. You know. Uh, I think we need one of them and another combo guard uh, that could, you know, be a shot creator as well. Because, you know, isolation, uh, ISO players are good, but, you know, you need, you really need to have players that could operate for the team as well. So I think that the second, I think that Dorsey or, or Lloyd is going to, uh, end up on our team and uh, after that we're gonna go for a player like I don't know maybe walk up is a great great pick but he's gonna he, yeah he a looks player. like a, a lot of teams want him yeah 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 he's yeah and uh, I think we should go for a combo guard as well when you know because of as I said before when Lucas goes to the bench you really need to have a player that could run the team not only like play play like um, playground basketball, you know, from the New York City, you know, courts, you know, the outside, the, the outdoor courts, like play isolation all the time. You really need to have a combo guard uh, behind Lucas who could play with both Lucas and Dorsey, let's say. Not both uh, Lloyd and Dorsey. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're just about an hour into the, into the pod. There's one more player really. I, I, I have to ask both of you your opinion because he used to be, uh, I say used to be touted as one of the biggest Greek talents we've seen in the last decade. Um, do any of you want to take a guess as to who I'm going to ask you about? Kill Bill, of course. No, 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 no. A great. No, I'm you said a great, a promising talent. guy, great a talent, guy. Prom ah, talent, promising ah. talent that's on our roster. Haralambopoulos. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do we uh, do with this guy? Is he finished? Like, is it over for him? Keep him or get rid of him? Um. You know, as I said before, when we're talking about Olympiacos BC, you need to bring players that could bring a lot of things to the table right away. And that, that's, that's the reason why Pokusevsky uh, was not playing. And he went to a team that was quite flexible into, you know, 
they, they didn't have any goals, let's say. Yeah. I mean, Oklahoma City was is one of the worst teams in, in the NBA. So when you don't have goals, it's easier to bring in players, try new players. Olympiacos has a, had a huge uh, mission at the beginning of the year. We need to get back to the playoffs and why not the Final Four? That was our mission, right? So when you're thinking about recruiting players or having a player in your roster, he really needs to bring some things, at least some things, um, to the game, right? Like Lara Zakis is a good example of that. He's not the best player. He's not an elite player in any aspect of the game, but he, he could put some pressure on the ball. He can shoot the ball. Uh, he's fearless. Uh, he plays with great passion. And I don't see this kind of characteristics in Haralabopoulos. Uh, in Haralabopoulos, yes. Uh, but his his contract, he has a contract for, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, for another two or three years. So mm -hmm. maybe loan him to another Greek team or Spanish team, let's say. You, we saw that Konyaris went to, the, to Obradoiro. Uh, that could be a, a good... Uh, option, I think, like loan him, and because I like the player, uh, he dominated in the younger ages, the under 18, under 20 tournaments. He dominated those tournaments. He's a good player. He's a solid player, but right now, he lacks the footwork, the athleticism. He likes, you know, the the experience. And uh, if you if you're just gonna have a player in your roster to like bring him in like one once in five or six on ten or ten games just to play three or four minutes there is no i, I don't i don't think that there's a reason to keep him you know it's yeah. it's it's not you know doing anyone right i mean you know it depends if we're playing in the greek league next year um so, yeah yeah that's uh, a huge uh, yeah, yeah that's a huge issue and uh we don't know we don't know I mean, uh, Manolo, do you want to explain maybe to to people that aren't really familiar with the situation as simply as possible, what is the situation now with the Greek Basketball Federation? There are elections supposed to take place. Elections are being postponed. People are running for elections that aren't eligible to run for elections anymore. <laughs> uh, Mr. Vasilakopoulos, what's going on and how could this affect whether or not Olympiakos is in the Greek League next year? I have breaking news for you, but because uh, just today the Minister of uh, Sports, Mr. Avgenakis, uh, uh, made a statement that uh, the elections uh, will be held uh, uh, on uh, the 30th of May, I think, uh, at the end of May, to be precise. And uh, so we will have uh, some evolutions uh, in this field. Uh, as you know, Olbiakos uh, has a development team uh, competing uh, in the second division, and it's uh, one of the favorites uh, to gain promotion. We cannot predict what will happen. Uh, I think that uh, uh, the front office uh, uh, will need reassurement uh, that um, the situation will be different than in the past uh, to return. Uh, I don't think that uh, with just uh, you know a change uh, in uh, one person, uh, everything uh, will be different uh, from one day to another. So. Let's hope that uh, something positive uh, will be from all this situation. And uh, I am. Uh, my opinion is that uh, Olbiakos should return uh, for many reasons, which are uh, related, you know, to the to the basketball itself. Uh, to have uh, the team to have rhythm and have uh, psychology after wins uh, in the domestic leagues. And to to have the opportunity to give playing time to many players, but all this should be related with uh, a, a league that uh, is not only fair but uh, 
also appears to be fair. Like the Caesar, the woman of Caesar, <laughs> they say, you know. Because we have seen uh, many things in Greek basketball which uh, are uh, out of the blue. Uh, I cannot uh, describe them right now, you understand. Yeah, I mean, we don't need to get into that anymore. Um, but Penny, do you have any thoughts on that you want to add? Um, you know, the headless organization. I mean, right now there is no head in the organization, which is a which is the same. I mean, the Greek basketball organization, one of the biggest in the world, one of the most successful in the world right now, um, due to the fact that the president doesn't want to get rid of his position, his in the organization, is headless. Can you imagine that? Right now, it's headless. No one is running. There is no president. There is no one running the organization. I, I mean, in some, in some, this, this is this is disgusting, man. I mean, this and is sorry, but typically there there are two presidents, but none of them uh, is last uh, year. Last year uh, there were uh, some uh, uh, resolutions of the meetings. Uh, and they were signed by people that were not present at the meetings. And after a couple of days, when, <laughs> when this came out, uh, they were trying to say that, you know, we were not present, but we agreed to uh, sign as well. And uh, to, to, you know, this is a joke, man. This is a joke. I mean, a lot of things need to change. And uh, we were Olympiacos. The owners were pretty straightforward when we left. Uh, when we decided to leave this uh, the, the basketball organization and about the things that need to change uh, and nothing nothing has happened i mean the the referees the, the refereeing in greek basketball is not professional man can you can you believe that can, can you believe that you know there are they were presenting several different versions of the uh, organizations articles of association last year no one knew what 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 is right and what is wrong what what really <laughs> is happening man we were like <laughs> this is a joke man this is a joke and this is these are the reasons why we left you know it it, it really is just like I mean, how many years has Vasilakopoulos has been president he's been Vasilak I think he's been president as Forever. long as he's been alive Forever. <laughs> Forever, Manolo is—is is it like? I—I I, I, I can't remember. I can't remember. Seriously, I've lost count. Forty years, forty years. Forty yeah, years. I, I was gonna say like as <laughs> long mean, as come I, on, man. The, as long so as I've been, been alive, he's been president of the Greek Basketball Federation. Yeah. And and you <laughs> see every every basketball federation having its best, its its huge names in the basketball, uh, in basketball like Russia has Kirilenko. Uh, yeah. Uh, Serbia has uh, the is it Divac? I'm not sure. These huge names, and we have all the all the all these great players that could that are actually are basketball, and we we simply deny the fact that we need to move forward. Come on, man. Come on. It's, and it's a similar like discussion that we have in football as well because in football we yeah Gramenos was the was the president of Epo the last four or five years however many it was uh, the guy you know if you kick a football to him he'll probably pick it up and eat it like, <laughs> it's like okay it's it, the the least you can the least you can hope for is that these positions are filled by people that have some experience in the sport. And we're lucky, actually, as a as a small country, to have, you know, we can say that in football we've won a European competition against against all odds. Nobody believed we would ever do anything like that. That we could ever accomplish something like that. And is Agorak is the right guy? I mean, we'll see. But surely it's better than Gramenos. Is Fasulas the right guy? Is Lolios the right guy in basketball? Surely it's going to be better than the situation we have now. Um, so I, I'm happy to hear that elections have been called at the end of the month. Um, let's hope for the best. 
Yeah. Um, and but, they're gonna they're gonna vote uh, digital digitally because they were refusing ah, yes. that, they were refusing that as well. Yeah, I mean, with tens of people actually passing away from COVID, they were refusing this. This is unbelievable, man. This is unbelievable. So many things for so many years. Do you know that? Do you remember that in 2012, uh, 11, this is the summer that the great 2011, 2012 team uh, that won the EuroLeague, uh, this is the summer that the team was uh, assembled. And a couple of months ago, the owners, uh, Agelopoli, uh, decided to leave uh, the um, basketball uh, department for, for the same reasons. And after 10 years, nothing has changed. Hmm. We've seen some slaughters, serious, serious slaughters from the referees all these years. We've seen coaches getting attacked in the parking lots because of losses, you know, from, you know, from like disgraceful uh, refereeing. And nothing has changed, and no one seems to be ready to change to, to, to leave all, all, all this behind. Because the other the, the, the eternal rival Panathinaikos is like controlling the system and they don't like the change. They don't like anything to be changed, you know. But anyway. And I I have a question for I guess a lot of people are interested in like international basketball. Is the national team going to be playing this summer? If so, in what competition? And if so, is Rick Patino really the national team coach? <laughs> because is that is that really going to happen? Uh, do you, any update on that? He has a job in America now. Yeah, so I don't know what the, Penny. Do you know anything about this? Like, um, are... th- they've said that he's going to be he's going to be the coach. Yes, as as it was agreed last year. I mean. This is a good question, man. We don't know the coach of the national team. I mean, this, this summer, <laughs> it has to be said, this summer, uh, this summer is recruiting season for Patino. Uh, it's he, you don't get much free time coaching college basketball, so yes. I don't know what I don't know how he's gonna be able to get away. I don't know, but we'll see. Yeah. But is Greece um, playing this summer in a competition? I uh, the Olympics? I, no, I don't think so. Right? I. Th- uh, this summer, yes, we're playing this summer in the. Uh, yeah, it's Euro yeah. qualifiers, isn't it? It's the qualifiers, yes. Yeah. Okay, so we'll see Rick Pitino maybe on the bench. I don't know. I know I some did. fans like international basketball, so <laughs> because Skortopoulos came out, I think last week and said that Pitino will be coming in as well. So yeah, it looks like that will be happening, but. Maybe anyway. can we get Mario Hazonia to play as well? I guess I, I don't know. Just... He doesn't have Greek nationality. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. If we find nothing our course connection there, he can call him. I don't know. Oh God. Anyway, um, we should start to wrap up soon, but there's no way that we can wrap up without talking about Vasily Spanoulis and whether or not he's going to play next year. I mean. The guy for me, he 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 deserves to go out and get recognition. I just cannot, I can't believe that he would leave from the game under these circumstances. I think he can still play a role for the team, particularly if we're playing in the Greek league. Um, I have a feeling that he will stay on if he can, if he can put his ego down and say all right i'm going to be third fourth option coming off the bench i'm going to be playing not a lot of minutes penny what do you think ma'am ah that's the tough one i (laughs) mean yeah that's a tough one uh listen i I, i'm not willing to accept that i will stop watching him you know on the basketball court like doing his thing you know it's it's gonna be so strange. Just imagine that Olympiakos is gonna play and Spanulis is not gonna be there. Um, you know, even if he's, I, I wanna see him uh, continue. Uh, and uh, even if he's like 40 years old, even if he's sometimes a bit stubborn, you know, on 
you know, really wanting to be the the guy, you know. Yeah. Uh, because he, he's such a huge winner, man. I mean, Spanulis, if he's on the roster, if he's in the roster next year, he, he will want to play a lot of minutes because as soon as he decides that I'm going to play, I think that in his mind, he has, um, you know, locked in that he can really, really give a lot of things on the court, on the basketball court, uh, because he's such a huge winner. I mean, Spanulis is the guy, he's our hero. He's, he's the main reason why we were possibly the most successful team of the last decade, because if you see at the trophies and at the, the finals that we reached, um, there were a couple of teams that were as good as we were, but with huge budgets like Real Madrid or Cesca. We were doing the same things. We had the same success with one third of their budgets. So we could say that we were the most successful team of the decade. And Spanulis was like the main reason why we were so successful. He single-handedly, I mean, he changed everything, everything for for Olympiacos BC. So I'm not willing to accept that he's going to stop, but he really needs to accept his right role within the team. I mean, if he's willing to accept that Slukas, Dorsey and Wokap, let's say, for example, are going to have are going to play the, like the huge minutes, there, there there is no there is no problem with me or with any anyone I think. Um but and he's not he's not stupid. I mean Spanulis is very smart. He's a very smart person. Uh if he sees that you know that's the best way to be successful, the team to be successful. Uh I think he's gonna accept his role. And uh, but we really need to start recruiting new players that could be like our leaders for the upcoming season in the next years because you know he's 39 in in, in august he's gonna be 39 and he's gonna be he's he, he will not be the same anymore he's not the same anymore but i want i want to keep watching him you know on the basketball court i i i i, I love spanulis man I, love, I think that everybody loves spanulis I it mean, reminds we, me. Sorry, Peter. Go ahead. It, it reminds me a bit of Kobe Bryant in some ways. Uh, yeah. When Kobe was retiring, uh, of course, it's different because when Kobe was retiring, the Lakers were very bad, uh, and so Kobe could shoot all the shots he wanted to, and no one would care. And so um, I think it's a bit different in that case. And and it's, there's that extra component with the ego. But I mean. It, there is a part of me that has to say, how can you not just let this guy play as long as he wants to in the red and white after everything he's done, right? Like, Peter, <laughs> Peter wants Peter wants a Vasilis Spanulis forty point fifty point last game like Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> let him shoot. Let him shoot as many yeah. times as he wants, man. We'll just see what he can do against <laughs> like uh, against some tiny club in like it like like in Greece somewhere in the league. Like, let him just go for sixty. That would be that would be something. Yeah, and this is gonna be a key uh, factor for that for his decision. I think he hasn't said anything yet, and you yeah. know, players when when they are about to retire, they they say they they say something. They give us a hint, at least. It you depends. know, he hasn't said anything, and his wife, yeah. I think, she had the um, Instagram Q and A, you know, uh, or something similar. I'm not familiar with Instagram, but. Uh, someone asked. Someone made uh, asked, asked if he's gonna retire or not, and she said, "What are you talking about? What are you talking about?" Yeah. So we don't know. But if we um, come, if we play in the national league, uh, yeah, he could have a great role in the team. I think. And you know, he's not. Spanulis is not important, and uh, only in terms of you know. His his um, performance on the court, yeah. But you know, outside of it as well, man. I mean, he's a he's a, such an experienced player, such a leader, especially to the young guys. He's a player that 
could control the locker rooms, especially after big defeats, let's say, or even after big wins, you know, you really need to have players that are really experienced on that, on that, you know, aspect. I don't know. Yeah, that's, but that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that, yeah. Yeah. As, as we uh, begin to wrap up here, um, you know, I think that was the big thing that we wanted to get to. And we know this is a long one, but you know, we don't cover basketball very much. Uh, so Penny, before we do uh, say goodbye, I just want to say thank you very much to you and Manolo for coming on. And I also want to say, um, give you the opportunity as well to tell people about red point guard. If they're not already familiar, uh, what, what goes on over there, what kind of content is coming out, um, and where they can access it as well. Yeah, uh, we post uh, regularly on our site, uh, redpointguard.com, uh, and uh, we post everything there. Uh, we're doing uh, several things. Uh, we're doing, uh, you know, comments on the uh, pre-game and post-game reports uh, before and after uh, every single game. Uh, we do scouting reports. We're going to have a lot of scouting reports, especially for players that, you know, are actually, we're actually interested in. And there are some rumors, not like rumors from dodgy, you know, sites or, you know, people, but, you know, like good sites and everything, reliable sites and people, let's say. Uh, and we're doing um, analysis on the game. Uh, what went? Uh, we're gonna do a lot of analysis, especially in the upcoming uh, months, because the off season is gonna be quite long this year. Uh, so we're gonna do analysis on uh, what went right, what went wrong uh, on the defensive end or uh, the offensive end. Uh, what we need to um, improve next year. What we need to add in terms of recruitment, as we said before. Uh, you know, we, uh, we're doing podcasts as well. Uh, we're doing live, we were doing live podcasts, uh, last year, uh, right after, uh, every game and we're doing podcasts, uh, we're doing podcasts, um, on Sundays, every Sunday we're doing a post, uh, a podcast discussing, you know, several things and, uh, we stopped these podcasts, but we uh, started again a couple of uh, weeks uh, ago. So uh, I believe that we're going to be able to do this as well. Uh, and, you know, we're um, covering every single aspect uh, of the game, uh, uh, you know, concerning uh, Olympiacos BC. Uh, we're doing some minor comments on NBA as well. It's not our thing, but we have... We have some people that are watching and, uh, you know, have the knowledge. Um, yeah, and we're using our uh, social media as well, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook as well. We're posting on Facebook as well. Um, yeah, more or less, you know, these are the things we're doing. <laughs> You guys are doing fantastic work. I mean... Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And you, you, you're doing fantastic as well. Uh, uh, you know, it's quite unique when, what you're doing as well, you know, having the international thing uh, on what you're doing. And uh, great job, great job. Thank you very much. No, go and check out redpointguard.com. It is, for me, for us, the best independent source for basketball news related to Olympiacos and other. So do go and check them out. They had an interview with Milan Tomic about yes, a month ago, I think it was. Yeah, and there are more interviews to come with really, really, really special guests. I mean, uh, it's sometimes we, we don't even believe, I mean, that <laughs> these people are actually agreeing to, you know, uh, doing interviews with us. I mean, we have some sort of good names uh, for the upcoming interviews. Super. So... Keep it locked. Go and check out Red Point Guard on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. They've got more coming. Uh, I, I can definitely tell you, Penny, that we we have similar feelings sometimes when we when we confirm interviews with former players, personalities of the club. 
it's a yeah. lovely feeling it's a lovely feeling these uh these initiatives like yours like ours uh, producing content and uh you know connecting the fans uh, in greece around the world so keep keep doing what you guys are doing fantastic work thank you so much for your time thank We've you very guys for having us thank you uh, we should uh, repeat that i mean anytime anytime especially when you know uh we have uh, the new signings new players coming in we i think we should repeat that for sure for sure yeah. we keep the, we keep the contact there and uh, thank you penny thank you to manolo as well uh, this is the gate seven international podcast hope you enjoyed this session if you've been listening on apple podcast on spotify podcast do remember to leave a comment at the end uh, or a like on youtube subscribe for more until next time trilosises to mialo kati magico you just listened to an episode of the gate 7 international podcast a podcast connecting olympiakos fans from brussels to tokyo from toronto to geneva We are four Olympiakos fans from every corner of the world, bringing you news and interviews of the team you love in English. With new episodes twice a week, you will never miss out on the latest updates and stories of the team you love. If you liked what you heard, make sure to follow us on social media at Gate7INTL. Give us a subscribe on YouTube or even leave a review on all our podcast channels. Until next time, this is our team, our city, and our story. Trilosise. Στο μυαλό κάτι μαγικό.